Hello and welcome to this video on factorising expressions of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now in the previous video we saw quadratics where we didn't have a number on the front of the x squared so we might factorise x squared plus something x plus something and it makes it harder when you have that number in front of the x squared we have to use a different method. Now there's two methods we'll explore to factorise this. Method one is to just intelligently guess, intelligently guess by just thinking about expanding two brackets but backwards. Now what we do is we put two brackets and then we think about what go into those brackets such that this would expand to give this. So let's first think about the 2x squared. How might we get that 2x squared in the expansion? Well it's probably going to be 2x multiplied by x. So that and expansion, this times this, would give the 2x squared. We also need to get that 10 here. Well, what might multiply to give 10? Well, there's different possibilities. It could be plus 1 and plus 10, it could be plus 2 and plus 5, or it could be plus 5 and plus 2. But we have to make sure that whatever two numbers we choose, it also gives us the 9x in the expansion. So let's say we were to try say plus 5 and plus 2. I might cross this out later. So that certainly gives us the 10 and we've got the 2x squared here. But let's see if we get the 9x. Well we're also going to have an expansion. We're going to have the 5 times the x in the expansion and then we're also going to have the 2x times the 2. So we've got 5x plus 4x which would actually be 9x. So I made a lucky guess in this case and I was right with the two numbers I picked. But if you were wrong then you just have to consider two other numbers that might work and keep on trying. So it's kind of trial and error. But if you don't like that method, there is a systematic method we can use where you don't have to do any intelligent guessing. And this is called splitting the middle term. Now what you have to do here, if I just write it out again, do you remember in the previous video, when we didn't have that number in front of the x squared, we found two numbers which added to give the middle number and multiplied to give the last number. Now it's very similar. We again, we find two numbers that add to give the middle number, 9. Now usually I put a plus above here, but I'm going to write it separately at the side. You'll see why in a second. And instead of multiplying to give the last number, we actually want to find two numbers which multiply to give the first times the last number. So we use that to get this number, and 2 times 10 is 20. So we need to find two numbers which add to give 9 and multiply to give 20. Well, those two numbers, well, we think of numbers that multiply to give 20. Uh, we've got 10 and 2, but they don't add to give 9. Um, we've got 4 and 5, and indeed, they do add up to give 9. So we want... For, to use 4 and 5. And what we do with those two numbers is we split the middle term. So we take that middle term and we split it using these two numbers we found here. So we can split it into plus 4x and plus 5x. And it doesn't matter which way round you put those two numbers. You'll end up with the same final answer. Now we've split that. We've still got these other terms here. So that was 2x squared and we had the plus 10 here. So this expression is exactly the same as this, except we split that middle term into two terms. Now here's where the magic happens. What we do is we look at each half of the expression and factorise each in turn. Now, if we look at this, what we do is we look for common factor. So it's a common factor to 2x squared and 4x. What's common to both? Well, they both have a 2 in common, so let's put 2. But they also have an x in common, so let's take the x out. And then we see what bracket we have after. So 2x times what gives 2x squared? Well, it's x. And 2x times what is 4x? Well, it's 2. So we factorise the first half. And then we factorise the second half. Now what I highly recommend doing is leave a little space here and then duplicate that bracket here. Because whatever we factorise out of here, we should end up with the same thing in the bracket. If we don't, we've made a mistake. So we just now need to think what times x plus 2 gives 5x plus 10. Well, it's 5, isn't it? And make sure that you put a plus before it. Because if you don't put that plus, it means you would be multiplying these things together when you're actually adding 5 lots of x plus 2. And that works, doesn't it? 5x, and we've got plus 10. That gives us this here. So we've got this 
expression here now. And the very final step is to say, well, these two terms here, have we got a common factor? Well, yes, we do. The whole of that bracket, x plus 2, is common to both of these expressions here. So we factorise out the x plus 2, and then we have a second bracket, and we see what's left. So x plus 2 times what gives 2x x plus 2? Well, it's 2x, isn't it? We've got x plus 2 times 2x gives you 2x x plus 2. And x plus 2 times what gives you 5 brackets x plus 2? Well, it's 5, isn't it? So we get that. And we can see, if we compare it against this, they are indeed the same factorisation. Now, obviously, this technique is much longer, but in cases where it's more difficult to make this intelligent guess, perhaps because there's too many options to consider, this method will always work. Now, let's do some further examples. We've got 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. Now, if we want to do the intelligent guessing method, I'll do both methods for this one. We can have two brackets... And then to get 2x squared, it's probably going to be 2x and x. And to get 6, well, it could be 6 and 1, or it could be 3 and 2. Now, let's just say it was 3 and 2. If that was 3, I'm just going to put it in small here because we can cross out later, and that was 2, let's see if that works. We've got 2x times 2, which is 4x, and 3 times x, which is 3x. 4x plus 3x is 7x, so that indeed is the correct factorisation. Or if we want to split the middle term, we need two numbers that add to give the middle number, 7. And remember, I'm going to put this on the side here, this working. And they times to give the first times the last number, 2 times 6 is 12. So then we just need to find two numbers which add to give the 7 times to give the 12. What are those numbers? Well, what numbers times to give 12? 3 and 4 times to give 12. And they add to give 7, so it's 3 and 4. So we split that middle term. So that's going to become 2x squared plus 3x plus 4x. And again, it doesn't matter what, which way you put those numbers around. And we've still got that plus 6. We've split that middle term into these two here. Then, as before, we look at the first half and the second half and factorise them each independently. So what's common to this and this? There's no factor common to 2 and 3, but we do have an x in common. So we take the x out. And then what do we have in the brackets? x times 2x will give 2x squared, and x times 3 will give 3x. And then as before, we leave some space, duplicate that bracket, and then think what goes in that gap. What times 2x plus 3 gives 4x plus 6? Well, it's 2, isn't it? 2 times 2x plus 3 will give 4x plus 6. And don't forget that plus in the middle there. And then what's common to this and this? Well, the whole of the bracket 2x plus 3. And finally, if we put a bracket here, 2x plus 3 times what gives x 2x plus 3? Well, it's just x. And 2x plus 3 times what gives 2 2x plus 3? Well, it's just 2. And we can see we get the same factorisation again. What about the next one? I'm just going to use splitting the middle term this time. So we've got 3x squared plus 10x plus 3. We want two numbers which add to give the middle number 10 and times to give the first times the last number, which is 9. What are those two numbers? What two numbers times to give 9? Well, it could be 3 and 3, but they don't add to give 10. Or it could be 9 and 1, and they do, in fact, add to give 10. So let's put 9 and 1, or it could be 1 and 9. We split the middle term, so we get 3x squared plus 9x plus 1x. And we got that plus 3 there. And then, as before, we factorise each half. Now, what's common to this and this? What's common to the numbers first? We've got a fact, common factor of 3. So we take out the 3. And we've got a common factor of x. And then what goes in the bracket? Well, 3x times x gives you 3x squared. And 3x times 3 gives you 9x. And then we duplicate the bracket. Now, what number goes here? What times x plus 3 is x plus 3? Well, it's just 1, isn't it? So we put the plus 1 there, and then, as before, well, we've got a common factor of x plus 3, so we factorise that out. And then x plus 3 times what is 3x? x plus 3, well, it's 3x. And x plus 3 times what is 1x plus 3, well, it's just plus 1. And we've got our factorisation.
Let's do some more. We got 6x squared minus 5x minus 6. We need two numbers which add to give the middle number, which is minus 5. Never forget the sign that's on the front of that number. It's minus 5, not positive 5. And multiply to give the first times the last number. 6 times minus 6 is minus 36. Now, what numbers does that give? What two numbers multiply to give minus 36 and add to give minus 5? Well, one of them's got to be positive and one of them's got to be negative. And let's think, well, 9 times 4 is 36, and they sort of combine in some way to make 5, don't they? So it's going to be 4 and minus 9. 4 plus minus 9 gives you minus 5, and 4 times minus 9 gives you minus 36. That works. So we're going to split the middle term. So we've got 6x squared. That's going to be split into plus 4x and minus 9x and we've still got that minus 6 there, and do the same thing as before. We've got a common factor of 2, 2 goes into 6 and 4, and we've got x, and then our bracket is going to be 3x plus 2. And then let's see what's common to this and this. Well, we duplicate our bracket again, and then we think what number goes in the middle. Well, it's going to be minus 3. Minus 3 times 3x plus 2 would give you minus 9x minus 6. And then we see we have a common factor of 3x plus 2. So we factorise that out. And then we're left in the other bracket. 3x plus 2 times 2x will give you this. And 3x plus 2 times minus 3 will give you this. And that is your factorisation. And last example, we got 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. We need two numbers which add to give the middle number, minus 4, and times to give the first time to last number, which is 4. What two numbers multiply to give 4 and add to give minus 4? If they multiply to give a positive number, they've either both going to be positive or both negative. They're not going to both be positive because they won't add to give minus 4. So they must both be negative, and it's going to be minus 2 and minus 2. So let's split this into minus 2x and minus 2x and we've still got the plus 1 and factorise each half they have a common factor of 2x and then have our bracket 2x times what is 4x squared it's 2x and 2x times what is minus 2x it's minus 1 duplicate that bracket and then think what goes in this space what times 2x minus 1 gives you minus 2x plus 1. Well, it's minus 1, isn't it? Minus 1 times 2x gives you minus 2x. Minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. Now, these both have a common factor of 2x minus 1, so let's factorise that out, and then see what's left. 2x minus 1 times what gives you that, well, it's just 2x. And 2x minus 1 times what gives you that, well, it's minus 1. And we get this, and we could write that if we wanted as 2x minus 1 squared. Now let's quickly do these test your understanding questions. We've got 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. And we've got second one. We've got 12x squared plus x minus 6. Now you may want to pause the video now to have a go at these. Now hopefully you've had a chance to have a go at that. So we need two numbers which add to give the middle number, which is 7, and times to give the first times the last number, which is 6. What numbers multiply to give 6? Well, we could have 6 and 1. And indeed, they had to give 7. So it's 6 and 1. Now, let's split that middle term. So we've got 2x squared. And we're going to use the 6 and the 1. So it's plus 6x and plus 1x. And we've got the plus 3 there still. Let's factorise each half. They have a common factor of 2x. So we take the 2x out. And then 2x times what is 2x squared, which well, is x. 2x times what is 6x, which well, is 3. And then we duplicate that bracket. So we've got x plus 3. And what times x plus 3 is x plus 3, which well, is just plus 1. Don't forget the plus in the middle. And then these both have a common factor of x plus 3. So factorise the x plus 3 out. And what do we have left? x plus 3 times what is 2x, x plus 3, which well, is 2x. And x plus 3 times what is 1, x plus 3, which well, is plus 1 and we get that factorisation. Now, what about this one? We need two numbers which add to give the middle number. Well, it's implicitly plus 1x, so they've got to add to give 1, and they've got to times to give 12 times minus 6, which is minus 72. 
Now, what are those two numbers? Well, let's think what time multiplies to give 72. It could be 9 and 8, and one of them's got to be negative to give you a negative number. Uh, so, well, 9 minus 8 adds to give 1, doesn't it? 9 plus minus 8 is 1, so it must be 9 and minus 8. So let's split this middle term. That's 12x squared. Split the middle term, we get plus 9x minus 8x, and we've still got the minus 6 there. And then factorise each half. So, what's common to this and this? Well, they have a common factor of 3. And we've also got the x and the x squared and the x. And then 3x times what is 12x squared? Well, it's 4x. 3x times what is 9x? Well, it's plus 3. Duplicate that bracket. And then think, what multiplied by 4x plus 3 gives you that? Well, it's just minus 2. Let's just check that. Yeah, that gives you minus 8x, that gives you minus 6, that works. And then we find the common factor here, 4x plus 3 is common to both. And then 4x plus 3 times what gives you this, well it's 3x. And 4x plus 3 times what gives you this, well it's minus 2. And we have our correct factorisation.